Hi everyone. This audio recording and the video found on YouTube was created for the purpose of having a way to quickly examine all 55 techniques in the propaganda game. Many of these you may even recognize but didn't know they actually had a name. We recommend playing the single player game found at propagandagame.org as the best way to familiarize yourself with these techniques of manipulation and faulty reasoning. When we begin to attach the examples seen in the single player game to real life situations, they crystallize in our minds much clearer than memorizing definitions. We are providing this audio file and YouTube video of technique definitions as a secondary method of getting comfortable with the 55 techniques in hopes that it may lead you to take the next step, which is to see the techniques found in videos, memes, and real life examples found in the single player game, which can be started by visiting our site at propagandagame.org. The examples in this audio or video are very basic. This is intentional as to both keep it simple and to whet the appetite to seek out better examples found on our website and the single player game. Let's get started. The first 10 techniques can be found in the self-deception section of the propaganda game. Techniques of self-deception are ways that we internalize propaganda methods and arguments to convince ourselves of positions or beliefs that may be faulty. Examples may involve statements made between people or internal arguments we use to justify our own conceptions. Either way, the effect leads us to reach conclusions through faulty or emotional reasoning. Number one, prejudice. A long-standing, deep-seated emotional bias that makes us unwilling to fairly examine the evidence and reasoning in behalf of a person or thing. We are not born with prejudices. They are acquired by indoctrination, conditioning, or prior experiences of a singularly pleasant or unpleasant character. Thus, prejudices have a history. They have a beginning. This technique is not about appeals to prejudice which come from outside you. Rather, this technique refers to how your own prejudice victimizes you, unaided by outside support. Prejudice differs from hasty generalization in that although hasty generalization often represents a spontaneous emotional reaction, prejudice is always a matter of much longer standing. The feeling that operates is deep, not superficial, and is often completely hidden from the person in its grip. Example, a white acquaintance said to an Asian man in passing, You speak so well for an Oriental. Number two, academic detachment. We refuse to commit ourselves when decision or action is demanded. In a situation requiring a stand to be taken, we see, or think we see, persuasive arguments on both sides. But certain situations require decision and action of one kind or another. Here, instead of trying to remain neutral, we must make a decision on the basis of which side seems to have the greater weight of evidence. Example. I've heard many arguments in favor of the Republican candidate and just as many for the Democrat. Therefore, I don't find any reason to prefer one over the other, so I'm going to stay home and not vote for either one. Number three, drawing the line. Sharp distinctions are drawn where it is inappropriate to draw sharp distinctions. Example, mother to her daughter. If you get married, you can forget about having a career. Number four, not drawing the line. The existence of differences are denied just because the differences are small and therefore apparently unimportant. Example, if we are allowed to stay out till two o'clock in the morning, why not till three? One hour doesn't make much difference. Number five, conservatism, radicalism, moderatism. These three habits of mind often are forms of prejudice, but they are not necessarily such. Prejudices have histories with a beginning, but the conservative, the one who prefers what is old or familiar simply because it is old or familiar, may be born such. It is a part of the temperament he brings into the world. Radicalism is the habit of preferring the new or the revolutionary just because of its newness. The moderate habitually chooses middle of the road or compromise ground. He avoids the two extremes. 
but there is no inherent virtue in moderatism or compromise as such. Actually, there are times when our position should be conservative, times when we should take a radical stand, and still other times when we should be moderate. Example, conservatism. You might say it's an old way of thinking, but old ways of thinking are generally wiser. Radicalism, what we need is new ideas and young fresh faces in this election. Moderatism, vote for me. My program is neither conservative or liberal. Number six, rationalization. You cite reasons or causes that will justify action that really has less credible grounds. Example, the student, having failed the test, blames his failure on how hot it was in the classroom, so hot that he couldn't think, when in reality he knows he didn't spend enough time studying. Number seven, wishful thinking. You believe a proposition to be true because you want it to be true. When we are forced to admit that our wishes have not become reality, we may then seek comfort in rationalizing. Example, I know the last five scratch-off tickets didn't win, which means this next one must be a winner. Number eight, tabloid thinking. To think in tabloids is to oversimplify a complex theory or set of circumstances. The tabloid thinker prefers quick summaries and has the habit of putting things in a nutshell. Tabloids concerning people are popular because they offer a neat summary of the character of a prominent person. Example, in college, Mike was taught all about evolution. You know, that we came from monkeys. Number nine, causal oversimplification. A complex event is explained by references to only one or two probable causes where many are responsible. Example, the problem is not guns, it's hearts without God, homes without discipline, schools without prayer, and courts without justice. Number 10, inconceivability. You declare a proposition to be false or impossible simply because you cannot conceive it actualized or possible of realization. Example, daughter tells her mother, Mom, I wish you would get out more often. You have so much to offer the world. The mother replies, I can't even imagine what I'd do at my age. The following techniques are found in the language section of the propaganda game. Language techniques are propaganda methods based on how certain kinds of shadings of meaning, linguistic devices, and how structured statements are used to persuade listeners of the worth of a proposition or idea without having to make a coherent argument. Number 11, emotional terms. An emotional term is a word or phrase which, however factual information it conveys about an object, also expresses and or arouses a feeling for or against that object. Example, mother to her child. That's the stupidest excuse I've ever heard. You must think I'm an idiot if you think I'm going to believe something that ridiculous. Number 12, metaphor and simile. A metaphor is a comparison implied but not definitively stated. In the case of simile, the comparison is explicitly stated by means of such words as like or as. In controversial situations, the employment of metaphor simile is to be avoided because such figures of speech are apt to suggest likeness not really intended or not actually present. Example, a cold bottle of 7-Up is like a cool twilight breeze after a hot summer day. Number 13, Emphasis. The technique of emphasis occurs only when another speaker or writer is quoted and one or more words are emphasized so as to imply what would not otherwise be implied and thus put into the mouth of the source meanings he may not have wished to convey. Oral emphasis is usually secured by means of pitch, tone, or volume of voice. Written emphasis is secured by a variety of devices such as italicizing and underlining. Example, daughter to mother regarding her boyfriend. Mom, all you said was not to call David. You didn't say anything about email. Number 14, quotation out of context. 
Quotation out of context is a propaganda technique when the effect of quoting a given statement without its context is to distort the original meaning and context. The context of a given statement is not merely the words that precede and that follow, but every accompanying circumstance, whether it be time and place or gesture and facial expression. Example, someone quotes the Bible as saying that money is the root of all evil but leaves out the preceding words, the love of. Number 15, abstract terms. An abstract term is a word or symbol which stands for the qualities, one or more, possessed in common by a number of particular things, facts, or events. The technique of abstract terms occurs when an arguer employs a word for which he may have meaning in the form of other words, but the arguer is unable to identify the concrete facts to which the word supposedly refers. Example, when the first lady was asked to give her opinion on the scandals racking the White House, she replied by blaming it all on right-wing conspiracy that's out to get her husband. When asked to elaborate on the conspiracy, she replied, there's enough people out there who've been victimized by these fanatics that know exactly what I'm talking about, and you the people of the press know what I'm talking about too. Number 16, vagueness. To call a word vague is to say that marginal situations can and do arise where there is doubt as to whether the word should or should not be used in describing those particular situations. The technique of vagueness exists where there is uncertainty as to the scope of the word. Example, mother to daughter. Now I want this understood clearly. You are not going to stay out too late again this Saturday night. Number 17, ambiguity. A word or phrase is ambiguous if in the mind of a hearer or reader it has two or more quite different meanings and the interpreter is uncertain as to which was really meant. Example, ad for dry cleaners. Drop your pants here and receive prompt attention. Number 18, shift of meaning. In shift of meaning, a word appears explicitly or implicitly two or more times in an argument but with different meanings. Conclusions based on a meaning different than the one initially intended are not necessarily valid. Example, my sociology teacher told us that those of us who grew up in America in the 20th century, with all of its greed, bigotry, and abuse of power, inherited a sickness. Well, if I'm sick, I guess I don't have to go to school today. The next set of techniques are found in the irrelevant section. Techniques of irrelevance use convincing but unrelated facts, references, sayings, or devices to promote a particular proposition. It makes the idea seem solid and substantial without having to provide truly pertinent and critical information. Number 19, appearance. The appearance of a thing or person is made the basis of our acceptance or rejection without any thought that this appearance may be a deceptive indicator of value. Example, I watch the news on Channel 7. I can't stand the beady eyes of the newscaster on Channel 9. Number 20, manner. A person's manner of behaving is made the basis of our acceptance or rejection of him without any thought that this manner may be a deceptive indicator of value. Example, Jane is such a darling to have in the classroom. She couldn't have possibly been involved in that fight. Number 21, Degrees and titles. We buy or we believe out of respect for degrees or titles attached to the names of those who persuade us. Example, spokesperson on television. Ladies and gentlemen, I am here today to offer you a new dietary product not available in the store. Slim Down is an excellent product developed at the University of Maryland by three PhDs. You should give it a try. Number 22, numbers. We buy or believe because of the large numbers associated with the product or proposition. Example, from an advertisement. One million more sold this year than last. Number 23, status. Person or objects for which we have a strong sentiment of respect and esteem, or which at least possess some degree of fame or prestige, are introduced into the argument as endorsing that which we are asked to buy or believe. Example. 
Taco Bell has the high energy carbohydrates that power Shaquille O'Neal and Akeem Olajuwon to the NBA Finals. Number 24, repetition. We buy or believe because we have heard or seen the idea or product name so often. Example, one year. One year to build our party from the grassroots up. One year to ensure that our candidate running for the White House has the resources they need. One year to get our message of lower taxes. We have just one year left to build on our momentum. Number 25, slogans. A slogan is a short, meaningful, catchy phrase or sentence intended for general consumption and designed to terminate thought and promote action in favor of the slogan maker. However true the slogan may be, if your action is merely a favorable response to the slogan, the technique is successful. Example. Palm, pomegranate juice, cheat death, the antioxidant power of pomegranate juice. Number 26, technical jargons. The technique of technical jargon is the use of technical language or unfamiliar words, whether contained in the dictionary or freshly coined, for the purpose of impressing people. Example, by elbow oral. It is the only toothbrush made with ZX606. Number 27, sophistical formula. To shut off or close the argument, a popular maxim or old saying is quoted. But every controversial situation must be settled in its own terms and not on the merits, if any, of some proverb. Example, a campaign targeted at Hillary Clinton. Life's a bitch, don't elect one. The following techniques can be found in the exploitation section. Techniques of exploitation appeal to one's personal weaknesses and insecurities, vanity, greed, misunderstanding, and biases. These are some of the most common and pernicious examples of propaganda seen in many public situations. Number 28, appeal to pity. An attempt is made to secure our commitment by presenting the object of commitment as an object of sympathy, thereby arousing our sympathetic feelings to the point where these feelings determine favorable action. Example, student to professor. I know my test grades have been poor and that I deserved an F, but my father is in the hospital and it will just break his heart if I get an F in this course. Number 29, appeal to flattery. An attempt is made to persuade us to buy or believe by flattering us on our own personal appearance or in some other category where we excel or desire to excel. Example, brochure mailed to alumni of a university. Indulge yourself with a Baltic luxury cruise. You've worked hard to succeed in life. Now enjoy some of the fruits of that success. Number 30, appeal to ridicule. An attempt is made to influence us to accept a certain proposition by poking fun at those who oppose the proposition. Example, teenage boy talking to another boy. Here, have a smoke. What, are you a chicken? You're one of those do-gooders, huh? Number 31, appeal to prejudice. An attempt is made to induce you to buy or believe by stating or suggesting that such action will secure or maintain prestige for you. Status and appeal to prejudice, though related techniques, nevertheless represent quite different errors. Example, if you don't improve your grades, there is no chance you're going to make it into a school like Yale. Number 32, appeal to prejudice. The one who makes the appeal to prejudice attempts to persuade you to act or feel in a certain way by associating his person, product, or proposal with a certain one or more of your prejudices, positive or negative. A prejudice being a prejudgment wrapped in emotion and having a history. Not only does he rekindle your prejudice, he also arouses in you warm feelings towards the one, himself, who apparently shares your prejudice. And so it becomes much easier to make you believe or buy whatever he has to offer. Example, men, this proposal comes from the management of this factory. I think that's reason enough for you to be suspicious of it. Number 33, bargain appeal. 
an attempt is made to get you to buy by appealing to your desire to save money. If you buy without making your own comparison as to price, quality, and service, the technique is successful. Example, but wait, there's more. You get two giant boxes of ultra pure snowy white baking soda for the price of one and then we'll double it. That's right, you heard me, four giant boxes for the price of one. An unbelievable value. Number 34, folksy appeal. The user of this device places himself or product on a level of neighborly intimacy with the reader or listener. The folksy appeal combines elements of appearance and manner. Example, Annex Pharmacy, where the pharmacist knows you by name. Number 35, Join the Bandwagon Appeal. An effort is made to influence you to act in a certain way by asserting or implying that that is what is popular or what the majority is doing. Example, there's a reason why poll after poll shows Senator Smith is the most popular candidate. He's obviously going to win with numbers like that. Number 36, appeal to practical consequences. An effort is made to persuade us to buy or believe by appealing to our concern for our own individual welfare, i.e., if we do as we are asked, we will secure certain beneficial consequences, while if we refuse to do as asked, the consequences will be harmful. Example, father to daughter. If you don't put those toys away right now, your mom is going to lose her mind when she gets home. Number 37. Passing from the acceptable to the dubious. The arguer states a series of propositions. The early ones are readily acceptable to the audience or reader, but the concluding statements may be dubious. The listener or reader is expected to accept blindly the latter ones because he has accepted those which came before. Example. The nation of Iran has been proven to be developing a nuclear program. They even brag about it. They even say that no one will stop them, and they've renewed their importation of weapons-grade uranium. Clearly, it is high time for a preemptive strike against them. The next series of techniques can be found in the form section. Faulty reasoning occurring through use of incorrect form of assertions used to bolster a proposition or pitch are some of the more sophisticated techniques employed. Though subtle, these approaches are nonetheless common and effective. Number 38, concurrency. Because things exist or appear simultaneously, it is claimed that one is the cause of the other. The form of the argument is A is present along with B, therefore A is the cause of B. But two concurrents could never be the cause of one another for a cause is something antecedent in time. Example, the speaker broke the very instant he touched the unit. A fine electrician he is. Number 39, post hoc. Because two events or things follow one another in close temporal succession, the first event is claimed to be the cause of the second. The form of the argument is A precedes B, therefore A is the cause of B. We may take as a hypothesis for testing that A is a cause of B, but we should not forget that any one of a score of other preceding events is equally worthy of investigation. Example, after the alarm went off, we saw him running from the smoking building. He should be locked up for arson. Number 40, selected instances. Support is drawn for a position by choosing only those cases or instances which back it up and disregarding those cases or instances which either contradict or do not support the position. The form of the argument is all A is B because A1, A2, A3, and A4 are B. The form is invalid. The arguer knows that at least A5 is not B. Example, Albert Pujols is the best player in baseball today. Here's why. He has more home runs than Alex Rodriguez, more RBIs than Andrew McCutcheon, and a higher batting average than Joey Votto. Number 41, hasty generalization. The arguer jumps to a general or blanket conclusion about members of a given group on the basis of an unrepresented or insufficient number of cases. The form of the argument is A1, A2, A3 are B, therefore all A is B. Selected instances and hasty generalization have much the same effect. There are important differences, however. 
Hasty generalization typically occurs on an emotional basis, while selected instances is typically coldly calculating. In the former case there is, at the time at least, no awareness of opposed instances. In the latter case there is. Selected instances is not merely crooked thinking, but dishonesty. On the surface the two are apt to look alike. And until we have evidence that the arguer is really deliberately closing his eyes to contradictory cases, we cannot label the technique as selected instances. Example, I just heard on the radio that Macintosh is having a closeout sale on their home generators. Last week, Home Depot was having the same sale. Clearly, nobody is buying those generators and the stores are desperate to get rid of them. Number 42, faulty analogy. To reason analogically is to reason that because two or more things or types of things are alike in some one or more respects, we may call this antecedent resemblance, they will therefore be found alike in some other respects, the consequence resemblance. In cases of reliable analogies, the antecedent factor is already known to have some bearing on the consequent factor. In faulty analogies, such knowledge is lacking. The form of the argument is A is like B in respect to C, therefore A is like B in respect to D. Example, here are 10,000 M&Ms for you. 10 or so have been poisoned, and there's no way to tell which ones. Do you still want them? No? Now you understand why I don't think we should bring refugees here from Syria. Number 43, composition. We reason as if the properties of elements or individuals were always the properties of the wholes which they constitute. But the assumption that what holds true of a part is automatically true of the whole cannot be justified. The form of the argument is A is part of B and A is C, therefore B is C. Example, he's a nice boy and she's a nice girl. I'm sure they'll make a nice couple. Number 44. Division. We reason as if the properties of any whole are always, i.e. necessarily, properties of each part. But the assumption that what holds true of a whole is automatically true of its parts cannot be justified. The form of the argument is A is part of B, and B is C, therefore A is C. Example, Mexican to an American friend. America is the richest country in the world. You can't tell me you're struggling to make ends meet. I don't believe it. Number 45, non sequitur. The conclusion is not necessitated by the premise or premises. Strictly speaking, all techniques so far covered where the conclusion is invalid are non sequiturs. There is, therefore, no one form of a non sequitur. Since the non sequitur label can be applied to so many other techniques, the label will be reserved here for only those invalidities that cannot be classified under some other heading. They are, at least, non sequiturs. Example, your children deserve the best, by Johnson & Johnson. The last set of techniques can be found in the maneuver section. The techniques of maneuver are tricks of argument. Many a debate are peppered with these classic devices. Discussions from the halls of Congress to the corner bar will often be controlled and channeled by these basic manipulations of reasoned communication. Number 46, diversion. To divert is to get off the subject. With the original issue left unresolved, one of the disputants begins to talk of something which has no apparent evidential value for his thesis. The diversion is full instead of merely partial when the second party to the argument accepts the diversion and joins in the discussion or argument over the new issue. Example, the speaker says, wars always create millions of innocent victims. The arguer replies, well, what about the people who were freed from Nazi oppression in World War II? To which the speaker answers, true enough. Number 47, disproving 